So the thought of the day, I always like to start with a thought of the day that sets the scene. Uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Um, this is a phrase that you may have already heard said many times before. And what it essentially means is uh, there is no point having a smart business if your business is not healthy or so. So smart businesses are built on really strong strategic planning, uh, budgeting, cash flow forecasts. All of those things speak to um, uh, having a really smart business. But if you want to create, and, and the aim of the game for all the businesses we work with is to create a successful, scalable, sustainable, saleable business, the four S's, then you need to ensure that you have a healthy business as well. And healthy um, is having a strong culture in place. When you speak of culture, people don't really know um, how to define it. There is no one agreed definition. Um, in our view, it's the cornerstones of culture, which has been really clear on your vision, your purpose, and your value set. Um, so businesses uh, who have healthy businesses, uh, time and time again, outperform businesses that are only focused on being smart. When you can put smart and healthy together, uh, then you've got the magic happening and you're working towards those four S's that we spoke about. So let's run through the agenda today. Um, I'm, I'm thinking and assuming everyone can hear correctly. Um, please shout out if you are having any issues and you can't hear. Uh, Megan's on board to troubleshoot any, any um, technical difficulties if you have any. So we're going to run through the cornerstones of culture, looking at your vision, your purpose, uh, the importance of core values. And then we're going to get into, well, that's great, the technical side, but how do we actually bring culture to life? And what we're going to share with you is our own internal culture card here at Traction, which uh, captures our vision, purpose and values. And you can start to see how you can become quite creative with pulling together uh, the, the cornerstones of culture to make it meaningful to your organisation. You can have a bit of fun with it. When it's done well, uh, I'm, a, I'm a strong believer and I'm extremely passionate about this topic, that um, when you get really clear on your vision and your purpose and your values, you create a really strong brand position that is powerful marketing collateral um, and a powerful brand asset. So let's uh, get stuck into it. Looking at number one, vision. So. Jim Collins is a, a really well-known author who created this visual here, which captures what he believes are the, the, um, the very essence of vision. And in his view, you have a core ideology and an envisaged future. And the core ideology, sorry, jumping ahead, the core ideology is really um, your identity. It's your core purpose and your core values. Uh, we're going to get into purpose in a second, but purpose is, is your very reason for being. If we think of that at an individual level, um, how many times we've all picked up uh, books I know I have around the meaning or the purpose or what, what you're here to do and how important it is to find that purpose. Well, that same philosophy applies in the business setting as well. A business that can get really clear on why it exists and what its value set is, uh, is a very strong position in terms of its ideology um, and its, its identity and the characteristics. So I think of core ideology as like your DNA, it's in your blood, it's, it's who you are, it's the very life force, the breathing force of the business. And the envisaged future, Jim Collins talks about having a BHAG, so a big, hairy, audacious goal. And this is intended to be a 10 to 30 year outlook, um, which sets the scene, it's like the big arrow or the North Star to where the business is going. Um, it's intended to be very aspirational, um, motivational, hard to reach, a little bit, um, a little bit audacious, hence, hence the BHAG line. 
So in essence, when you take this this core ideology and envisage future and put it together, overall your vision is around dreaming big. So, you know, you want your vision to be something that is, is extremely powerful. Um, you know, your vision is your North Star for the people in the business. It's giving them something to look toward, to navigate toward, to feel empowered by. So when building your vision statement um, and really coming back to this visual here, to get to your vision statement, you also need to combine it with the core ideology. So the very essence of the business, you need to have that 10 to 30 year outlook married with the reason that you open your doors every day and the values. So what this yin and yang represents is whilst you've got something out there that's really aspirational and pushes you forward, you've also got this really beautiful anchor in that um, you've got a core purpose, which is your, your very reason for opening the business doors every, every day um, that anchors you and grounds you. And then you've got the vision, which is aspirational and uplifting and motivational and forces you to be that little bit better um, today than you were yesterday because you're trying really hard to, to reach that vision. Um, if I can give an, an analogy of, of something we'll all be familiar with, Richie McCaw, he had a vision to be the GOAT, the greatest of all time. And in Richie's view, um, he never achieved that. And that's because every game he went out and performed, he could have done a little bit better. Um, so whilst people might have thought that he got there, in his view, there was always room for improvement. And that's what we want the vision to be like in your business. You want it to um, propel you to want to move forward, to do more, to do better. Um, but you want it to also be something that is, is almost impossible to reach. You'll, ne you'll never quite get there. You'll always be searching, trying to do more. So the yin and yang is a really nice way to represent the, the balancing act of the, the purpose and the vision. So how do you actually build your vision, vision statement? Well, importantly, even though it's something that is about the future, the future state, you want it to be worded in the present tense. So word your vision statement as if it were actual um, right now. We've spoken about the importance of the vision being a powerful phrase. You've got to think of this vision as something to turn to um, when you're looking for a little bit more inspiration. You know, being in business, particularly um, in the climate that we are uh, currently in, it's not always um, straightforward. It's not always rosy. There are pressures, um, the, the economic pressures that we're in currently off the back of two years of COVID is is one of those examples where the vision can really pull your people together. Um, it can help create um, empowerment in your business. It can describe that even though things are not always great, there's, there's an outcome and things will be better. So you want to use um, powerful, motivating, evoking emotion type language. You also want to describe the best outcome. And what I mean by that is think of it as if you had a magic wand, what would your future state be? If you wave that magic wand, what would you want your vision and your business to miraculously deliver for you and for your clients and for your staff and for other stakeholders? So describe the best outcome. Use unambiguous language. And the key to this is to be authentic. So use language that actually means something to you. You know, visions and, and purposes and values, they are everywhere now um, because people understand that when you get it right, you've got a very powerful brand proposition and, and brand is, is um, it's, worth, it's worth something. It's got intrinsic value attached to it. That said, you can't lift and shift this. You can't take this from someone else. It has to be yours. It has to be your teams and it has to be something that you all buy into. Um, and finally, I guess, you know, you want the vision to build the same picture in people's minds as it does in yours. 
So when you speak about your vision, you want to see that vision unfold in the minds of other people too. Um, and if you're having to really um, over-articulate or walk through or think about the vision or try and get people to buy into it, then probability is you, you haven't really nailed your vision and you're going to need to do a little bit more soul searching in the business to really nail that for you and your team. So let's look at some examples of vision statements now. You know, Tesla's been um, in the media a lot lately. Uh, they've got a really compelling um, vision statement here to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles. Uh, Nike's one, it's pretty cool. Bring inspiration and innovation to every, every athlete in the world. And in Nike's view, they've got a little asterisk next to that word athlete, because if you have a body and you're wearing Nike clothes, then you're an athlete. Uh, so pretty, pretty smart play on words there. And LinkedIn, um, create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. Um, that, that certainly is a BHAG. It's very audacious. I don't imagine when LinkedIn started um, that that was their, their vision. They've gone super out there. LinkedIn is a, a huge professional networking platform. So to create economic opportunity for every single member of the global workforce, that's certainly compelling um, and motivating and, and hard to reach. Let's have a look at uh, Traction's vision now. Uh, so Traction's is to have people doing what they love and loving what they do. When you walk into our office, you'll see this poster um, huge on the, on the wall. Um, and that's important to us. Uh, we started with the vision, um, which was, uh, I think it was clients and team maybe doing what they love and loving what they do. And for us, it became people doing what they love and loving what they do, because um, whether you're a client or a team member or, or a stakeholder, if you're in with traction, you're part of our Fano. And so our big, hairy, audacious goal is that whoever we encounter will hopefully be doing what they love and loving what they do. Um, this plays out at a practical level for the, the people, um, our internal team at Traction, which is, you know, role alignment. Are you doing what you love and loving what you do? Recognising that not all the time we're going to be at work doing every single thing that we love, but by and large, it's about saying, you know, what are we working on? Are we loving what we're doing here? You know, what, how are our clients feeling? Are they loving what they do? Um, so it's for us, it's it's certainly audacious. Um, it's a it's a long term goal that we'll all be um, doing what we love and loving what we what we do. It empowers us. It, it motivates us, and it reminds us, um, you know, that life is short. And while we are here, when we rock up and we come through those doors every day. Rest assured, you know, we're going to give it our all and we're going to love doing what we do. Um, and we're going to help our clients to do what they love and love what they do too. So there you go. So that's vision in, in a nutshell. I appreciate this is pretty, pretty high level and time moves quickly. So um, if you have any questions about vision and building that out in your business, do drop us a line. Okay, so the second cornerstone of culture, purpose. Um, we're going to run through a really neat visual here by Simon Sinek. Um, people who work closely with me will know that um, I draw a lot from Simon Sinek um, because he is a massive advocate in terms of finding your why. Uh, and we are here too. And you get really clear on why you do the things that you do and why your business exists. Everything else, I can assure you, uh, hand on heart, because we've been through this exact process ourselves off the back of the rebrand from HPY to Traction. Everything makes sense. So in Simon Sinek's view, he says people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Let's run through a visual of this. So often people start with what they do. And, and think of this situation, and we've all been there, whether you're at a barbecue or a networking function or a school event or swimming or at the beach or wherever you are, 
after a while when you meet someone um, new or even people that you've known for a while, eventually they'll ask you the question, so what, what do you do? What, what do you do for work? And people will start here and that's often, uh, that's often as far as they'll go. So um, what do you do? Uh, and Megan might say, well, I'm an accountant. Okay, conversation stops because people think they know what accountants do. Very rarely do we get to the discipline of how you do what you do. And almost never do people get to why they do what they do. So what we want to try and do is start not from the outside in. We want to start from the inside out. We want to start with this clarity of why first. So take this example instead. So um, Megan, what do you do? Well, I uh, provide business clarity for life. Ah, okay. Well, how how do you how do you do that? Well, we work with business owners one on one to get really clear with them at a personal level what they're trying to achieve, so that we can align the business to that, and we deliver that through strategic planning, uh, coaching and accountability sessions, you know, webinars, cash flow management, education programs, X Y Z, whatever you want to say. And then they'll say, okay, so, so what do you do? Well, we're business advisors and accountants. So in that situation, we've worked from the inside of the circle out. Rather than starting with what we do, you start with why you do it. And you can have a far richer, more meaningful conversation. Let's take something totally different here uh, out of the business context and look at the honeybee. The honeybee is a nice way to articulate this diagram. So if I say to you, and appreciate you can't, can't speak back, um, but think about this in your mind, um, what does the honeybee do? And you might say, well, the honeybee, uh, it, it makes honey. And how does it do that? Okay, the bee, the bee is there to make honey. How does it do that? Oh, it cross-pollinates, it goes to flowers, it does blah, 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 all the things you'll come to. But why does the bee actually exist? And if you ask this question to people, I'm yet to encounter someone that has actually uh, given the clarity of why the bee actually exists. And it's because we're so busy focusing on the what and the how, we're forgetting about the why. So the bee, the honey bee, actually exists to protect the queen. The product, which is the honey, is simply a byproduct of what it's doing. The bee does not exist to create honey for us all to enjoy and eat. The bee exists to protect the queen. And it does that through the, the pollination. And the result is the byproduct of the honey created. In the same way that as accountants, you know, attraction, we exist to provide business clarity for life. The accounting that we deliver in terms of annual compliance or GST returns is simply a byproduct of being an accountant. It's not why we open our doors every day. Um, why we open our doors every day is because we believe it's important to give business owners clarity, clarity in terms of whatever it is they're searching for a greater meaning of, whether it's clarity in terms of their financial information or clarity in terms in, in terms of where their business is actually headed or clarity in terms of what their role in the business will even look like in five to 10 years time. With clarity gives confidence, confidence gives the ability to make decisions and move forward and get ahead. Um, so think about this in, in your businesses. Think about why your business exists. Start with the why. The why is your purpose. The why is why you actually open your doors every day. And try and act, think, and communicate from the inside out rather than the outside in. So there's a little bit more information in here, and then these slides will be available for you as, as well as the recording um, on demand, where you can take some more time to work through this. But Remember that the, the what you do is usually often only the result of why you do what you do. It might be a byproduct of why you exist. In some situations, uh, the, the byproduct of why the business actually exists 
is another business offering in its own right. So spend some time thinking about the why. Hopefully uh, that visual articulates the importance of the why and getting really clear on, on working from the inside to the outside. So how do you build your purpose? It's not easy. Um, I, and I will say that it's not something that can be glossed over. I think we spent the better part of a day thrashing out our purpose, just brainstorming, whiteboarding, a million words on the wall until we kept coming back to this word clarity for us. So while there might be a hundred different accounting firms out there that anyone could go to, um, you could all have a very different different purpose. And coming back to this visual here, you know, Simon Sinek, beautiful quote, the goal is not to do business with everybody who needs what you have. The goal is to do business with people who believe what you believe. At Traction, we believe that clarity is fundamental. Um, and so while we um, might provide the same accounting services as every other accounting firm in the business in terms of annual compliance, our difference is that we will provide you with clarity when delivering that service. So the characteristics are you want it to be inspiring to your team. You want the team to feel in your business. You want the team in your business to feel uh, in alignment to it and to feel inspired by your purpose. You want your purpose to be as relevant as it is now in 100 years time. You know, in 100 years time, uh, the very world in which we live is going to look fundamentally different to what it is now. Accounting will look extremely different to what it is now. Every one of you um, attending this webinar today in the industries that you are in, rest assured that industry will look different to what it is now. But a really strong purpose, an evergreen purpose, will be as relevant today as it is, as it is in 100 years' time. You know, the, the search for clarity will be probably more relevant in 100 years' time as access to information becomes even more readily available. Now, it's, it's astounding to think that we have more information available to us on our smartphones now than the President of the United States did 10 years ago. It's, it just, it's, it's phenomenal how much information comes at us. But with that information, we are now searching for clarity, what do we do with it all? You want your purpose to help you think about what you could be doing, but you are not. So for us, clarity being our purpose to provide business clarity for life, we're always thinking about where does this process need to improve? If a client's coming at us with questions, clearly we haven't given the clarity that we need to. What do we need to be working on? What do we need to be enhancing? What needs continuous improvement? So it should be, um, your purpose should be also used as a way to help you think about where you need to be doing more of something. It, it helps you decide what not to do. An example of that is we recently changed our uh, proposal service. So when a client signs up, and they receive their terms of engagement. We recently changed that system to a new system, which we thought would provide uh, greater clarity. It didn't, it was more confusing. And so we've reverted back to the, the previous system that we were using. Heck of a lot of amount of work, I don't, don't recommend it. Um, but it's important to, to lean into your purpose and say, if our purpose is to provide clarity, but we're getting all these questions, clearly we're not living into our purpose. And again, just like the vision statement, you want it to be authentic to your business. So it has to be words that resonate with you. It has to be words that, uh, and language that you would use uh, when you're talking to people. Just checking the time, so I know this is a topic that um, we can talk about for a long time. So choose words that are authentic, language that you would use, it should be relatively easy to fall upon eventually when you keep returning to the same type of wording. Um, a powerful purpose, I, I, I cannot overstate this, will, will honestly help propel you and your business forward in the most meaningful way. I'm, I'm so committed um, 
to the cornerstones of culture because it's the exact framework that we worked through to, to reach our, our rebrand. So let's look at some examples of purpose statements. We've, we've ran through attractions, business clarity for life, uh, Teslas to accelerate the world's transition to sustainable energy, and Zoom to make video communications frictionless and secure. So we're all on a Zoom right now. I'd, I'd have to say they're living into their purpose. It's, it's certainly frictionless so far. Um, and the security is is 100% there as well. Uh, we wouldn't be using it as a platform if it, if it weren't. Um, so you can see here in these three purpose statements that they are very succinct. So, you know, five to seven words, um, you, you don't want it to be too long. You want to be able to remember your purpose statement off by heart. Um, you know, if you don't know your purpose statement, how can you expect your team to buy into it? And over time, you want your team to be able to, to know the purpose as well. So let you read this quote here for a second. It's a nice way to sum up how I look at the purpose statement and the vision coming together. You know, it's, it's your opportunity every day to build the tomorrow that you want. Um, so use your purpose and your vision statement as a way to help you um, filter through what needs to be done in the business, triage the many items that need to occur, but break it down and go, you know, does this get us closer to living into our purpose and our vision or not? And if it doesn't, then you have to ask yourself, why are we doing it? So when, when done effectively and when implemented and embedded in the business, your vision and your purpose combined with the values which we're about to move to become a super powerful decision filter uh, for you and your business partners and your team. So now that we've ran through vision and purpose, we're going to come across, um, come over to the core values. So the importance of core values. Let's take a step back for a, a second and just talk about values. I'm going to skip a couple of slides forward and come back. So the identity iceberg, this is a really neat visual which will help to articulate, I hope, the importance of our values because our values are deep beneath the surface, a little bit like the Titanic iceberg. What you see is not always uh, what there is. And so just like this iceberg where there's a small part on top, um, the iceberg down below is often far deeper and more entrenched and is what people cannot see. So what people can see in terms of, um, in terms of our identity is our actions and, and also what should be in there is our behaviours because our actions drive our behaviours. Our actions and behaviours um, are, are easier to change. I say that in a pronounced way because it's not, it's not super straightforward to change our actions and behaviours. It takes some work, but we can far more easily work on our actions which change our behaviors to receive different outcomes in a far uh, more simplistic way than we can work on some of these other things. So our actions drive our behaviors and what drives our behaviors and actions are our habits. And if you um, think about how long it takes to change a habit, there's, there's a whole bunch of different literature out there, anything from 21 to 72 days. But, you know, we've all gone through these things where we start to um, uh, say, you know, New Year's resolution or coming into summer or whatever it is, an event, I'm going to eat cleaner or I'm going to drink less or I'm going to exercise more. Um, and we try to change our habits so that we can change our actions and we can have different behaviors to achieve an outcome. Our habits are driven from our thinking. So the thoughts in our head tend to drive our habits. Our thinking is driven by our beliefs. Our beliefs are driven by our personal values and our personal values um, 
you know, are often not always our own values. They are values that come from deep beneath the surface. They're values that have been given to us potentially by parents or grandparents or teachers, friends, uh, more often than not these days, social influences um, are, are prescribing values um, for, for younger people coming through that are, are following influences. All these things make up our identity. And what I would argue is, is that if you really want to see absolute meaningful change in whatever it is you're trying to do, then you need to work on your identity and change your identity uh, to get the outcomes that you want. And what I mean by change your identity is, for example, if you say, um, I, I um, want to run 21 kilometres, I'm going to make this up as, as we go. So let's hope that this, uh, this illustration works. Let's say I want to run 21 kilometres. And so I say, well, to do that, I need to change my habits. So I'm going to go for um, a run every day. And, and when I do a run every day, I have, to, um, I have to be able to do 5K and 10K and 15K. And until I can do 15K, I won't be able to run a, a half marathon. Um, in my view, that is a is a flawless is is a dangerous approach because it won't always give you the outcome that you want because you won't move forward until you reach those those pivotal things um, and it's because you haven't worked on your identity. So if you change your identity to rather than having an outcome based approach, change it to uh, an I am approach. So if you say I am a runner, then a runner will run three Ks. They don't need to run 15 or 20 Ks. They will just run. They will just get started. And a runner, a runner identity will say, I need to stretch. I need to do this. That's just what a runner does. And so you achieve the outcomes that you want by changing the identities rather than focusing on the outcomes. And we've got another visual here, not in this uh, presentation, that, that we can share with you to help run through and articulate that. So the point of this being is that if you want to change your outcomes and behaviours and actions, you need to get really deep below the identity to what drives, what drives the actual actions and behaviours. And importantly, understand that every single person who comes to work in your business comes with their own identity, driven by their own personal values, their beliefs, their own thinking and their habits. So the importance of doing core values is to understand, first of all, that everyone in the business is coming at things with their, their own views of the world. And what you're trying to do as a business owner is take all the values of everyone in the business and create it into core values. Core values being quite distinct to um, just straightforward values, which is core values are those that drive the business board. They are the values which are required for the business to deliver on what it needs to deliver on. But it's important to take time out with your team to understand how actions and behaviours are, are actually driven and where they stem from, because things that are deep beneath the surface take time to actually work through and understand. So the importance of core values is understanding and bringing everyone in the team together to first of all, get a grip on what values are, where they stem from and, and why they're important. Uh, and then to bring it up a level so that everyone uh, in the business becomes aligned on what the business's core values are. When they are um, done well, and what I mean by done well is they uh, there's a clear understanding of the, the theory behind values. Um, they have the team buy-in. The team understand what they mean. They are um, authentic to your team. They mean something to your team. They are, they are chosen by everyone in, in the team, and the team buys into them. Then you have a really powerful decision-making um, filter 
that you can use to engage your team, that you can use as part of your recruitment process, that you can use to have some difficult conversations if you need to, um, but also some really positive conversations of, you know, for example, Megan, I really loved how you lived into our value today of purpose. Um, purpose is, is one of our values here. Um, at traction and, and we will talk about that you know when you when you del de delivered xyz for that client you really gave them a strong sense of purpose and, and that's really important to us here and it's great to see you living into those values uh, I was working with another business last week where we used their values um, to deal with some conflict resolution in a really um, in a really intense way it was was delivered so well where um, you know, the the team member also went, yeah, I can see what you're saying. There wasn't any sense of um, unease about entering this conversation because everyone in the team had signed up for these values. So, you know, it was um, a, a really straightforward way to bring something up that might be a little bit tense otherwise, but to bring it up in a in a setting where you can speak through values and say, when I saw you do that, it didn't feel like you were living into our values. And the values are something that we've all signed up for here. So talk to me about that. I want I want to understand, well, you know, why did you do that? Um, how could I have helped you navigate through this differently? So it allows you to have a really nice conversation with team members where needed um, around behaviours and actions and actually living into the values. Um, the values become your business identity. They just, they become who you are. They transcend um, products changes, service changes, leadership changes. They, they are the very heart of your business identity. And when core values are embedded in the business really well, I've seen them used as a way in which um, the leaders don't even need to speak to the values, the team do it. The team will say, look, I'm not comfortable with that. That's, that's, that's not how we do things here. Um, they are a really beautiful tool for um, creating a, a really strong culture where people feel safe to speak um, and people understand uh, what drives different behaviours and, and actions and, and why the values, they're not just words on paper, they are actual living things that um, make up your workplace family. So I really like this identity iceberg here. I think getting really clear on the, on the theory behind how values actually become so meaningful and the fact that, it, you know, what we do is actually driven far deeper beneath the surface is important. And I, and I would say at a personal level, take some time out and, and work through your personal values. My personal values are different to our core values at work. Um, and I routinely review my personal values um, to ensure that they are authentic to me. Uh, I, for a very long time, had hard work as one of my personal values, uh, which I changed earlier this year to effort. Um, hard work, I realised, was was a, a family value, um, which is still important, however, um, to me. However, uh, I decided that I want to work smarter, not harder. Um, but whatever I do, I want to put absolute effort into it. So. You know, thinking about your own value set and where your values come from and, and whether they're your values or whether they are, are passed on from someone else. And, and if they are, that, that's great. You know, my, my personal values, uh, number one, around respect was something that was um, drilled into us as kids that I drill into my kids. Um, so think about your personal values and then think about how they play out into the workplace. Um, and you bring your personal values to the workplace, uh, but you uplift them, you bring it up a level so that you're living into the core values, those values which drive your business forward. So how do you actually derive your core values? Well, you need to allocate uninterrupted time. Um, it's, not, it's not something that can be delivered quickly. Um, we typically allow around four hours for a, a core values workshop with a team, um, and that will get you uh, most of the way there. 
Of course, the challenging part comes into embedding the values in your business. And like anything, when it comes to embedding, that takes time. You want to use an experienced facilitator. So someone that understands um, how to bring a team together, that understands how to uh, ensure that no one person dominates the, the room or the conversation and brings in some dissenting thought. You know, value sessions in some businesses uh, can be, there can be periods where it can be quite an agitator in the workshop and you want a facilitator to bring that agitation out so that you get to the good stuff. Um, you really want extensive brainstorming. So a facilitator will keep pushing the team to come up with ideas uh, when they, they start to run out of, of content. You want five core values. Um, any more than five is too many. Remember, the aim of the game is to have this uh, being recited by, by you and your team. So five is, is an ample amount which captures everything really neatly. Um, a definition of each core value is really important. So your team need to know what the value actually means. And again, you're searching for alignment here. Um, relevance is important. You want the values to be relevant to your business. And again, uh, be authentic. Choose values that mean something to you and your team. Uh, we did one uh, a while ago with a business and, and theirs uh, was you know, really authentic to them. Things like, don't be a dickhead or um, I think they had one which was um, uh, we don't eat biscuits here or you know they that meant something to them um, and that's important because it's what drives their culture forward and what I would say is avoid hygiene values so those what I mean by that are um, those things that are a given you know for example if if you came to traction and one of our values was um, integrity, um, then, you know, I wouldn't be too inspired by that. Um, I think it's fair to say that when you engage a professional, integrity is a given. Um, so think of those things that, that should be a given, you know, um, honesty and, and those things, they should be a given in my view. You shouldn't have to articulate that as, as a value. That, that just is who you are as a, in your profession. So really challenge yourself to move forward and think about meaningful values that are, are not just hygiene things that we should have anyway. Okay, so how do you bring your culture to life? You've, you're working through your vision and your purpose. You've got your value set. Well, what next? Well, this is when uh, the hard work comes because this is when you need to actually embed it in your business. And this is when you have to commit it to memory, visually promote it, share examples of it, review it, uh, run over it with your team. You have to essentially be what I call a CRO, Chief Repeating Officer. You cannot talk about it enough um, to the extent where your team will probably get sick of you talking about it. I know I've been told here at Traction that um, everyone's probably had enough of, of hearing about it. Um, but you know you've got to keep bringing it, bringing it home. And a really neat way to do that is to um, create a culture card. So your culture card um, is your opportunity to do something great, uh, and you don't have to necessarily put it on a on a poster um, or um, on a traditional card type thing. You can do lots of wonderful things with it. Um, I know the team at Architects 44, uh, shout out to, to Rachel and, and James and Dan have done some pretty magical things with their values. I was, I was just looking at their office now because I can briefly see, I think, one of their kites up. So, you know, swing past Architect 44's office and have a look at how they have captured their values in their business. Um, you can get really creative with how you do it. And that's the beauty of this is that, um, Again, when you dedicate the time to creating your own uh, vision and purpose and values, you then get to create the magic off the back of it, which is your own brand asset and your own brand story that means something to you and your people. So this is our culture card. Um, so you'll see with our rebrand, we're really focused on action here um, and having a bit of fun with action heroes. Um, that's because it's all good and well to 
uh, to do to to say what you're going to do, but unless you actually take action, nothing will change. And that's the five A's of change. You know, you've got to be aware. Um, you've got to accept that change needs to occur. You have to take action. You have to hold yourself to account, and and you have to acknowledge what you've achieved. So for us, our vision, uh, action heroes doing what they love and loving what they do. You know, action heroes being our internal team here that help um, us deliver great things for our clients, but also the awesome clients that we work with. They are all heroes doing great things for their clients, and and we're we're super proud and, and privileged that we get to work with the caliber of businesses that we do. Our purpose, delivering business clarity for life. Uh, our values, are we put Fano first with gratitude and purpose. Uh, we have fun and we have no bullshit. So that means we, we're real and we take action. Um, and our brand promises, you know, we will give, we'll guarantee clarity and focus or your money back. So when, when a client works with us and does coaching and accountability sessions, if they don't get the clarity and focus that they're searching for, uh, then we haven't delivered on our brand promise and, and we'll happily return the money that they have invested. That is how committed we are to what we do here and why we do it. So action time. This is this is the important part where you get to think about uh, here as a business owner or a people leader on this webinar, what are you going to do? Uh, there's lots you could do. Um, so have a think about where you might get started. Um, some suggestions are you actually commit to reviewing or creating your own vision, purpose and core values. And, and I honestly, I keep emphasizing this, but I, I cannot overstate it. Um, when you really buy into your vision and purpose and core values, I can promise you, you feel proud uh, in your heart and you feel proud to share it with your team. You feel proud to talk about it um, and really good work flows off the back of it. Um, you want to take your team and customers on the journey with you. It's a fun, creative process um, and it's something that's truly yours and unique to, to you and your business and, and provides a beautiful story to talk about. So, you know, think of it as a journey um, and, and get started on the journey. And, and even if you, you do have one in place already, you know, really dig deep into it, review it and interrogate it and agitate yourself, disrupt yourself with it. Are you truly living into your purpose? You know, what could you be doing more of? What, what, what can you be sharing more with your team? Focus on what you can do. So this always comes back to one of our mantras here at Traction, which is have a glass half full attitude. You know, um, there's lots of things that are outside of our control, but just, just get started. Do what you can. Version one's better than version none. Um, and know that we're here to help as well. So today, um, off the back of this webinar, we'll give you the, the Golden Circle Worksheet. Um, we're, and also the identity iceberg, those resources will be available for you. And if you have any questions about those uh, for your business, please do let us know. We also offer um, a proactive accounting meeting. So again, that's complimentary. If you want to come in and have a chat about where things are at with your business and, and how you can navigate forward and what an individual plan looks like for you and your business, then 100% then come on in. Business planning. Uh, always important. So, you know, setting that annual plan of the direction of your business is, is fundamental, particularly in this environment, having a plan and breaking it down into your quarterly rocks of, of your priorities. Um, you see how fast the year flies. So you want to ensure that, you know, at a at a daily level, you've got absolute focus on what you're doing, that it aligns to getting weekly traction. You know, monthly alignment into those quarterly projects. Uh, the quarterly projects, of course, should be the, the key rocks to helping you achieve your annual plan. The idea being as simple as this, guys. Pitch yourself a year from now. What do you want to tick off? That's, that's the ticket. You, you, the, we live in this beautiful place where we can actually think about who we want to be and why we want to do what we want to do, and we can work backwards to achieve it. And research shows the brain doesn't know the difference between actual and thinking. So when you think about what, what you want to create, 
you will evoke the same emotions in your brain as if you had actually achieved it. The, tech, the trick is you want to actually be able to work backwards, reverse engineer, um, and achieve those things that you set out to. Core values development, so that's the core values development workshop that, um, that is a, a team session to actually drill down into what your unique values are. And of course, coaching and accountability sessions, which work really neatly, um, us acting as your accountability driver to ensure um, progress over delivery. So if you go to our website, you'll see this here. You didn't come this far to only come this far. Um, and that's become a, a really uh, cornerstone, I guess, mantra for us, which, which keeps pushing us forward to say, you know, like, don't stop. You only just got started. So start your journey today. Do something. Don't do nothing. You've rocked up here today, which is the best part. You've committed the time and you've come to the webinar. Um, so what else are you going to do to take next steps in your journey? Okay. That wraps us up for now. It's 11.24. I've spoken for a bit longer than, than I uh, had intended to. So apologies for that. Uh, might have been that identity iceberg. Have any questions come through, Megan? Uh, I, I'll just have a look now. Um, sorry. So there have been a couple. Just a reminder, if you do have any questions, if you could submit them now. Um, there is one that um, is asking if you can please talk a little bit more about what hygiene issues are. So I'll send you back over to Mom. Yeah, great, great question. Um, so the hygiene values, again, just, just to sort of reiterate from that earlier comment, are things that you would expect when you are going and engaging a business. So um, you know, uh, take an accounting industry, for example, if, if you go and see your accountant, I'm guessing that you are expecting to work with someone that's going to have integrity. I'm, I'm guessing you're going to want to work with someone that, um, that uh, has, has the professionalism to get the job done, um, that, is, that is honest, that... Um, you know, all those things that you, you just are expecting when you engage someone. So hygiene values are, are just really, I guess, for me, they are their go-to easy values that, um, that we should all be doing. Um, and it it's probably means you need to dig a little bit deeper beneath the surface to, to get to the true values that mean something to you. Now, that's not to say that it's a, it's a no-go zone. I've... I've um, for example, the, the proactive I've seen as a value, which when it is all in the definition, I guess, is what I'm saying. So I've seen proactive, be proactive as a value in a business. And the definition of that um, is, is um, so well defined that it makes absolute sense. So I guess what I'm saying is interrogate the values that you come across and say, is this just a hygiene value that is what we do anyway, and we don't need to actually, you know, get it out there and really live into it because that's just that's just who we are. Or if it is, then define that in a in a neat way. You know how I said have a definition of you know five to seven words explaining what the value is. Um, so hopefully that that helps answer the the question. Uh, okay, another one that has been asked is what is the um, what is the difference between values and core values? Yeah, good question. So values are, if we come back to that identity iceberg, the, the values are um, those things that your team will bring to the workplace every day. Those are the, the things that are just part of their identity without even knowing. Um, you know, for example, someone might, uh, might, you might see a team member that is just super punctual all the time, never misses anything. Uh, that's just their values, who they are as a person, versus some other people might not have that value because they've, they've grown up in a, in a different way where 
you know, flexibility was much more important. That's that's a bit of a crappy example, but values are um, just who we are as people and what we bring to the table. Core values are the values that are core to moving the business forward. So they are not personal values of individuals. They are the values that are core to taking the business um, closer to achieving its vision. Uh, and they are values that everyone in the business signs up to and subscribes to, uh, whether their personal values um, are on board with it or not. Now, more often than not, you'll find that there is very little uh, misalignment between personal values and core values. But it's being mindful that just because you, a team member signs up to these core values for the business doesn't mean that they are letting go of their own personal values. Their personal values are still in play. It's just the core values are those things that speak to moving the business forward to achieve its purpose and its vision. Uh, you may have brushed over this one in the, uh, with the first question, but um, the other question we have here is how long should a vision or purpose statement be? Yeah, really good question. So um, I would say five, five to eight words, um, nine max. Uh, remember, you want to be able to recite your vision and your purpose statement. So anything that is too long is going to be more difficult to recite uh, and, and more difficult for your team to be able to articulate. Um, so like everything, it's much harder to uh, be succinct in what you're saying than it is to write a lot. So the, the fewer words, the better. The fewer words, the less um, unambiguous it is. And if we come back to um, the up here, vision statements and purpose statements of these businesses, you'll see, you know, Tesla's one, two, three, four, seven words. Uh, and same with the visions, they are five to seven words. So you want it to be... Um, no, not too much. Um, super succinct, in a sentence, shorter the better. Um, that also forces you to ensure that you're crystal clear on what you're trying to trying to achieve and trying to say. Really good question. Um, and what I would say is, and just get it out on paper first. We did this with a business last week where we didn't focus too much on, on how long it was. We just got it out. And then each week we've tried to take out uh, I think the goal was to get it down from 15 to nine. So each week we've removed a word uh, and it just forces you to be very deliberate with your language. Um, it does take time. As I said, we spent uh, the better part of a day just doing vision and purpose. Okay, that looks like that was all of the questions, but if you do have any further questions or would like to discuss anything further, don't hesitate to get in contact. Um, we will leave you there. Thank you all for attending this webinar on vision, purpose and values, and I hope you have a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everyone.